We're going over the next video in our series for our top 50 overall fantasy players of 2024. In this video, we're doing 11 through 20. And right here at 11, we're going over with Jonathan Taylor. He's a running back that just barely missed into my top 10. I think he's a phenomenal running back that probably deserves to be in the top 10, but there are just some other players that I like just a little bit better than him. Jonathan Taylor just missed a little bit of early on into the season, but one, he was able to go in there and take that job back from Zach Moss, and he was showing that he belongs to be the guy. I think he said back and saw what Zach Moss was doing in this offense. He was like, oh, no, sir, not today. The good thing is that Jonathan Taylor gets to come back into 2024 with Anthony Richardson, the quarterback for the Colts. And I can't wait to see any of those run play action passes that they're going to end up coming up with. It should open up a lot of lanes for Jonathan Taylor. We should see him back on the horse being one of the top running backs in the league. It wasn't that long ago that he was the number one running back in the NFL. And I think he can get close to that this season. Let's look at what he was able to do last season Jonathan Taylor ended up with one uh, or 741 rushing yards with seven touchdowns alongside 153 receiving yards and one touchdown on top of that and keep in mind that was not a full season you give a full uh whole season to Jonathan Taylor you should see well over a thousand yards rushing and quite a few receiving yards as well as long as Anthony Richardson could control this offense the way I think he can you should see Jonathan Taylor being a stud at that position let's go over the next guy at number 12 we're talking about garrett wilson i think that a lot of people are maybe sleeping on garrett wilson a little bit this is probably the first slot that i have that might get a little trouble in the comment section because i know a lot of people have puka nakua over garrett wilson but i have to put garrett wilson here I think Aaron Rodgers is going to come to town. And he's got a chip on his shoulder, wants to prove that he belongs in the NFL. And I think he's going to hyper target Garrett Wilson, just like he did with Devontae Adams or Greg Jennings or all these other receivers that he had in the past. I think he's going to make Garrett Wilson a phenomenal player. And Wilson was able to put up over a thousand yards receiving without Aaron Rodgers. Think of what he's going to be able to do with Aaron Rodgers. I cannot wait to see these fireworks that's going to happen with Garrett Wilson. Let's just look at what he was able to do last season without Aaron Rodgers. Garrett Wilson ended up with 95 receptions, 1,042 receiving yards, and three touchdowns. And like I told you guys, wait and see what he has with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. He's over there with OTAs, OTAs already, showing out of camp, showing he wants to be there, building that rapport with Garrett Wilson. I'm telling you guys, get Garrett Wilson on your team. And if you're in a dynasty league, go grab Garrett Wilson. I'm telling you, he's gonna probably the cheapest he'll ever be uh, before this season. Because once the season starts, when you start seeing Garrett Wilson putting up the numbers that he did, I think it's going to shock quite a few people. So we're going over here now to number 13. And now we get to Puka Nakua had the best rookie season of any rookie wide receiver season ever. Right. And I know I was in some videos late, later on the channel that you guys had saw a while ago. And people were kind of dogging a little bit. Like, how do you have Puka Nakua rated underneath Garrett Wilson? Why? Well, look, it's, it's quite easy, right? Number one, there's going to be regression. There's going to be regression for Puka Nakua. Number two. There's going to be a lot more Cooper Cup involved. Yeah, Cooper Cup's a little bit older, but I think that with, with Cooper Cup missing a little bit of time and this and that, you know, I think Stafford, this may be his last season, his last hoorah. He's going to want to throw the football quite a bit, and I think Cooper Cup's going to be in a lot more involved into this offense as well, which is going to decrease Puka Nakua's numbers in, in general, right? People know who Puka Nakua is now. His coverage might be a little bit better than he had last season. There's a lot of factors that go into Puka Nakua not having a generational type of season like he did last season. Let's just see what he did last season. Puka Nakua ended up with 105 receptions, 1,486 receiving yards and six touchdowns. And like I said, I don't dislike Puka Nakua. A lot of people maybe have taken it that I'm like hating on Puka Nakua or, you know, I just don't have him highly ranked because I don't like the guy. I don't know what the case is. I like Puka Nakua a lot. I just think there's going to be some regression there and there's going to be some, some progression with Garrett Wilson. So I just think I had him flip flop now. Garrett Wilson is definitely ahead of, in my rankings. Puka Nakua is the next guy in my rankings. I can't help it. It is what it is. If you don't like it, leave it down in the comment section. What do you guys think? Garrett Wilson or Puka Nakua? Who do you guys think should be uh, ranked ahead? I definitely have Garrett Wilson. I'm going to slot right here at number 14. We're going over at Saquon Barkley. He now has a new home with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think he's going to vulture some of those tush push touchdowns that Jay, uh, Jalen Hurts gets. That's why I have Jalen Hurts hurting a little bit into my rankings. That's why I've got the whole offense of the Philadelphia Eagles kind of hurting a little bit. It's mostly not only Jason Kelsey coming to town, but Saquon Barkley, right? They're paying this guy to come in to be the hoss, right? 
I think when you get to the goal line, yeah, you're still going to see some of those touch pushes, but I think Saquon Barkley would be the benefactor of a lot of touchdowns in the red zone. The Eagles love getting in the red zone, and I think Saquon's going to have probably most touchdowns he's probably ever had. We're looking, we're, I'm thinking double digit touchdowns for Saquon Barkley in 2024. Let's just look at what he did last season with the Giants. We saw that Saquon Barkley end up with 962 rushing yards with six touchdowns alongside 280 receiving yards and four touchdowns on top of that. This is by far the best offense that Saquon Barkley has ever been a part of. And I think you're going to see that in his fantasy value and his fantasy numbers. I think this year you're going to get him at a pretty much of a steal. Nobody's drafting him as what he should be getting drafted as, as of right now, based on fantasy relevance. I think he's going to be putting up phenomenal numbers week in and week out. As long as he, you know, doesn't get injured or anything, God forbid, knock on wood. I think he's going to stay healthy and I think he's going to be phenomenal. Once again, easily probably... He could be a top three back, and I, I wouldn't say, you know what, that surprised me. No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Saquon Barkley is uber talented. He just hasn't been on the offense yet to unleash all of his talent. This could be the season, 2024. Make sure you get Saquon Barkley on your, on your lineups. He's number 14 in my rankings right now, but wouldn't be surprised if he rises up my rankings throughout the week of the actual uh, season. So we're going over number 15, our first rookie that we're going in our top 50. We're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., the dude's phenomenal. Generational type talent right out of Ohio State, making some spectacular catches. I love the way he can catch it, especially on the sidelines. All three levels of the field, he's able to do a great route running, great showing great hands, definitely in the red zone. But in the short, even in the intermediate route, even in the deep long, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He is the man. Speaking of being the man, he's going to be the man in the Cardinals. There's nobody else there. What, you got Michael Wilson, Greg Dortch. No one's going to take targets away from Marvin Harrison. Kyler Murray is going to hyper-target Marvin Harrison. You're going to see him score a lot of points i wouldn't be surprised that at the end of all this starting next season marvin harrison is in my top 10 overall players of 2025 i just think he has that type of production in him as long as kyler murray can produce the football and give him a lot of things i think it's going to be solid he didn't score any points obviously last season because he's a rookie this season but i think he's going to come into the nfl and show you guys wow I belong as a top tier person, and that's why I have him here at 15. We're going over right here now at number 16. We're talking about the running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Travis Etienne Jr. I think he's another guy, right? They kind of did a little bit of change with, with Calvin Ridley. Now he's gone. They got some more offensive weapons in there. You're looking at probably Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis. Uh, you know, you just got some players all over the field. They drafted Brian, Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. So they got some weapons on the outside. Still have Evan Ingram at the tight end position. And even though at the running back position, you still have Tank Bigs be kind of biting at the heels of Travis Etienne. This is clearly Travis Etienne's backfield. He is getting the bulk of the carries and he can go in a string of runs for fantasy football. It's giving you solid, solid numbers. Let's look at what he did last season. Travis Etienne ended up with 1,008 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns alongside 476 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown on top of that. In a PPR league or a half PPR league, you're happy to have Travis Etienne. And I think that overall people may be looking at him as a scat back or receiving back, but he also runs through the tackle very very well his vision his cutback ability is quite good so i do like travis Etienne. he's clearly one of my top backs in the nfl for fantasy football and if you get him on your team he's even at the rb1 he could be a good rb1 for your team let's go over the next guy here at number 17 we're talking about drake london somebody who's shooting up a lot of people's rankings and draft boards including my own because of kirk cousins coming to town i think you know drake london will finally get his first 1000 yard receiving year this season he's never had a thousand yards receiving because he's had a lot of cockadoo at the quarterback position. What are we talking about? Desmond Ritter, Marcus Mariota, Taylor Heineke. What has he had at quarterback? Nothing. You you put somebody in that knows what they're doing, like a Kirk Cousins. I think it's phenomenal. Even if they didn't get Kirk and they ended up with Michael Penix, I think he would have a thousand yards receiving. I love the opportunity for Drake London. Even if you're in a dynasty league and somebody you might want to go get, he should be good for years to come. He's got the talent to do some things. Let's just look at what he did last season with the cockadoo quarterbacks that he had. We look at Drake London. He ended up with 69 receptions for 905 receiving yards and only two receiving touchdowns. Now, I do expect him to have way more than two receiving touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised. Eight, nine, even 10 receiving touchdowns should be in store for Drake London. I think he's shooting up a lot of people's boards, like I said earlier including my own so that's why i have him here uh at the 17 spot right so let's move right along here we're going to number 18 we're going with debo samuel for the san francisco 49ers and yes i do have debo samuel over brandon Ayuk. a lot of people have brandon Ayuk slotted above debo samuel but i think clearly clearly debo samuel is the number one 
wide receiver for this team, not just based on receiving yards. Brandon Ayuk clearly has more receiving yards, but the involvement of Debo Samuels, what we have to remember in this offense, he gets a lot of jet sweeps, a lot of rushing ability. That raises his value in fantasy football. When you're getting rushing yards, that's solid, right? So even though he doesn't have the, the receiving yardage that Brandon Ayuk showed uh, last season, he's definitely, he catches up a lot with that rushing ability. And when getting the ball in the Debo Samuel's hands, he's like a, a yards after the catch, yards after the after the touch, right? He's a yat king. That's what I'm calling the yat, yards after touch, right? It doesn't matter. You get the football in his hands, he's going to make something happen. Let's look at what he did last season. Just Debo Samuel, just for receiving, we're talking about 90 receptions, 892 receiving yards, and seven touchdowns. If there's somehow... Debo Samuel ends up with a thousand yards receiving. You know he's going to be putting up a plethora of rushing yards as well. You're looking at Debo Samuel yet again being a top tier fantasy wide receiver. That's why I have him here at number 18 and above Brandon Ayuk. So let's move it right along here. We're going to number 19. We're going over a quarterback here, our first quarterback of our top 50. We're talking about Lamar Jackson, the quarterback out of Baltimore Ravens. I do love this guy and the way he plays football his rushing ability i'm talking when he's taken off he goes outside of the pocket you are excited if you are a fantasy football owner well let me take that back you're excited and both scared at the same time right so right you're excited because you know he can make anything happen but you're scared because i'm like oh my gosh he is one big hit away from his little small frame to getting crushed snapped into and your season's completely over so it's really big like a like a rush right when you have lamar jackson because He's very exciting to watch, but it's very like, oh my God, please don't get hurt because you don't want that to happen. Let's look at what he did in 2023. Lamar Jackson ended up with 3,678 passing yards alongside 24 passing touchdowns, 821 rushing yards and five rushing touchdowns on top of that. Guys, Lamar Jackson could be a freaking stud. I mean, he can be there week in and week out. You can get him a little bit later. You can even get him after all these quarterbacks like the Patrick Mahomes and the Josh Allens and the Jalen Hurts. You can get him after all those guys. And I think he's going to do better than all these guys in 2024 based on the floor of his Russian ability. So, guys, Lamar Jackson, somebody you don't want to sleep on. I think he could be an absolute phenomenal play for you. Let's go over the last guy here at number 20 in our rankings. And, boy, it's going to shock a lot of you guys. We're talking about Anthony Richardson. He's going to be the second quarterback that I have on my list. The number two quarterback in fantasy football ranking right now. Just hear me out, right? Anthony Richardson, when he was able to play, he was either the number two quarterback or the number four quarterback on the week in fantasy football. And he had one and not too great. But overall, the dude is absolutely phenomenal. When he was able to play and he was on the field, he was producing top five quarterback numbers and even a, a, a finish at number two in one of these weeks. So the ability of him rushing the football and getting a lot of points is, oh man, this is a juicy, juicy fantasy player to get your hands on. If you got him, yes, you're scared of all get out. He didn't play a lot of games at the University of Florida. He didn't play a lot of games in the NFL because he hurt himself because he's trying to truck everybody. Now, he needs to clean up a little bit on that, but guess what? The rushing is not going to go. His instincts for running the football is not going to go. He needs to be able to protect himself, run out of bounds, and slide a little bit more instead of lowering his shoulder because he's a big dude, right? Let's look at the limited time what he did last season. We see that Anthony Richard ended with 577 passing yards with three touchdowns alongside 136 rushing yards and four rushing touchdowns the dude only played in a handful of games and he had four rushing touchdowns including one game he had two so he can put out some crazy numbers for your football team and probably if he ends up playing all season long i promise you he will single-handedly win you some weeks you match up uh you know anthony richardson with some of these other top tier guys because you can draft anthony richardson as like a the 10th best quarterback in the league right now his adp has fallen I think he's a steal, and I have him at number two in my ranking. So, guys, this is just the second video of our top 50 here. Wait until we see our next video when we go over uh, rank 21 through 30. Can't wait to go out with that one. Make sure you are hitting the subscribe button and hit a like button. And let's see, who did I leave out of my top 20 here? Is there anybody else that you can see that should have jumped in that didn't make the list? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And like I said before, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. We're putting out multiple videos each and every week, leading you up to your fantasy football drafts to ultimately help you win a championship. I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. We'll see you guys next time.